Welcome to Microsoft Build 2017. Let me know if this has ever happened to you. Your boss, a coworker, maybe somebody from marketing comes to your desk and asks you to grab just a little bit of data for you, just real quick. Of course, this is on top of the dozens of other things that you need to get done during the week. So you're looking to write a quick script that will allow you to uh, automate collecting that data for them and send it out on a weekly basis. And then finally, being able to update it uh, quickly and easily by adding to that script. So today, we're going to look at how the Microsoft Graph can help you achieve that. Microsoft Graph is an endpoint uh, API surface that has a bunch of different endpoints, including uh, O365 data in your tenant, about OneDrive, uh, Outlook, um, as well as many other services. So today, what we're going to do is use the PHP SDK, and that will allow you to get in, get the data that you need quickly, and get out. So this demo is going to be using a PHP script to compose a weekly email summary that you can send out. So to get started, let's go to the registration portal. We can click here to add an app and give it a name. And then when we click Create Application, it will send us to a page that has a lot of information that we need to fill out. So the first one here, we see we've got an application ID. This will copy and paste over into our script is a variable such as app ID. Then we're going to want to generate a password for it. It will give us an application secret that, again, we can copy and paste over into our script. The next step here asks to add a platform. In this uh, scenario, we're doing a server-to-server -server authorization, which means that uh, you want to actually have a user present that has to log into the system. However, the very first time that you use this application, an administrator will have to log in using his tenant application and grant the permissions to the application um, on Microsoft Graph. So in this instance, for that part of the scenario, we'll select a web platform. This will allow the user to log in online, and then we'll give it a redirect URL. In this case, we're just going to use localhost. Um, we won't actually need it to return us anything. We just need to uh, consent to the permissions, so it can be whatever you want. Then down here, this is the important part for our client credential flow, our server-to-server -server authorization. We'll have, to set, uh, we'll have to say which application permissions we want to give permission to. So we'll click Add, and you'll see we've got a ton of different permissions we can choose from. In our application, we're going to be using directory.read, group.read, mail.read, and send, and finally, user.readall. And we'll click OK to add those scopes. And then finally, we'll click Save, and we're done with the registration step. So now we can go back and uh, actually have our admin log in with his tenant. You can see here we've got a long URL. This is available in the sample. Um, you'll redirect to this URL, and um, this will take you to a page where you can log in with your administrator account. And you'll see it's got a bunch of scopes. These are all the scopes that we just uh, asked for in the registration step. So we'll click Accept. And then it's going to redirect us back to localhost, which again, we don't have anything running, so it's just going to give you an empty page. But you can safely exit out of this and know um, that you've registered your application successfully. So now we're ready to dive into the code. You can see here, we've got our admin email already set up, as well as the tenant that we want to use. And we've copied and pasted over our application ID and secret. We've also got this content variable that's going to hold all the data that we want to put into our email template. And then finally here, we're going to start um, validating our user. So we want to authorize on the server-to-server -server flow through this method called getAccessToken. So let's write up what that method would look like. So we've got our stub.method here, and we're going to use curl to make a request. We're going to hit the login.microsoftonline endpoint using our tenant, and then hit the OAuth2 v2 token endpoint. We're going to set the body of it to the grant type, which is client credentials. We're going to put our client credentials in there as client ID and client secret. And then finally, we're going to want to specify the scope that we're using. So in this instance, we're using the Microsoft Graph scope. Now we can set the options uh, that we've just defined, so our URL, our post body. And then finally, we're going to want to set return fields to true. Um, that will make sure that we get the information to us instead of dumping it into the command line so that we can actually use the response. And then we'll set our options in curl. And finally, we'll get our results. So we'll call curl execute on our curl handler. And then we're going to JSON decode that response and take out the access tokens that we can use in our app. So now up here, we're ready to use graph. 
we'll create a new graph object, and then we'll set the access token for that using what we got from the first step. Now let's echo it to the command line and make sure that we've actually got an access token that we can work with before we move on. So let's switch over to the console. We'll do PHP report generator. And you can see that it gives us a huge string. Um, that is our access token. So we're good to go and we can move on. So our boss is asking us um, to get some information about how people are using O365 groups. He's really excited about all these new groups he set up. And he wants to make sure that he's gaining traction on them. So let's get him some information. We'll switch over to our code again. And we'll write a new method um, that will call get group data. And we'll pass in our graph object so that we can call graph using it. So we've got our stubbed out method here. And we're going to print out a little command line statement so we know kind of what's going on, get some status updates. And then we're going to create a data array. We've got a helper function here um, that will create an, a table, an HTML table from this data. So for now, we're just going to set the title to groups. Uh, we're going to include some table headers, which are the group name as well as the membership count. And then we're going to set our content to be an empty array, and we're going to fill that up row by row. So let's go get some groups. We'll call graph create request. We'll be doing a get request on this and at the groups endpoint. And we're going to set our return type to group. By default, it'll just send a return, uh, a response. And we want to cast that response into a group type. And we'll hit execute. So now we can iterate through each of those groups. For each of these, we can get the name by calling uh, group get display name. And then we can also get the membership count. This is another call to graph that we need to make, another get request. And we're going to get the group ID that we're currently iterating on. And we're going to hit the members endpoint. Again, we're going to set our return type to a type of user in this instance. And we'll hit execute again. And then from that, it's as simple as calling count on our members to get a membership count. Finally, we're going to parse that into a row in our data content array. We'll be putting in the name as well as the count for each of these groups. And then finally, when we're done with our for each, we're going to return that data through our helper create table method that's going to parse it into an HTML table. So back up here at the top, um, let's sp spit out our contents. So we can see that we're actually getting uh, the data that we think we should. So we'll call a report generator again. This time it's going to think about it a little bit more because it's got to get all that data. And now you can see it spit out a ton of code here. Um, we've got a lot of uh, table tags. We've got some uh, things that look like names. We've got some numbers in here. So everything looks like it's running well. It definitely doesn't look nice uh, from the command line. But since the intent is to put this in an email, hopefully it's going to look beautiful once we get to that step. So let's go ahead and send that email now. We'll hop back into the code. And finally, we're ready to make a method called create email. In this method, we're going to pass in graph again. But we're also going to give it some additional data, including the email address, the tenant, um, and that content string that we've been building up so far. You can see here we've got this email template um, that I put together. It just adds a little bit of styling to it. And that'll prevent the CSS from being included in the HTML. So let's create our email. We're going to grab that form uh, using file contents. And that will allow us to just use that um, by itself without having to include it in the file. And then we're going to parse out that content variable that was included in it by using string replace. Um, so we'll find that string, and we'll replace it with the content that we want to display and save that to our body variable. Now we can actually create the body of the request to graph. So you can use models if you want. That's what we've been using so far. But you can also use an array or even a string to access information in graph. With the, with the library is really flexible about how you use that. So in here, we're just using an array because it's a little bit faster. There's so much information that needs to be included in an email. So now we can create a new request. This time, we're using a post request. And we're going to be hitting a user uh, is their inbox. So let's say we use the admin email that we have on hand to send an email from. Usually, I like to pick the same person as from the sender. Uh, I think it just makes the most sense. And then we'll hit the send mail endpoint. Uh, we're going to attach our body. So that's that mail body array that we have up there. And then finally, we'll hit execute. 
Um, and this method is not going to actually return anything, but if you wanted to, you could make um, a call to see what the response code is and make sure it's a valid 200 level response. Now we can actually switch over and see if we've gotten our email. And you can see that we've got lots of data in here. So the one that we looked at today, we've got our groups. We've got our membership count here. It goes way down. And then there's some other information in here um, that's included in the sample that you can download. So if you want to see how you can get information on your employees, their messages, we've got some OneDrive and planner data in here. All that will be available in the sample for you to play around with. So that's what I would encourage you to do. Um, you can actually uh, set it a cron job to run this automatically. You can run it through the command line, or you could even set up an Azure function that will uh, run it on a regular interval for you. Um, so go to the GitHub repo. It's on CBales WAC report generator. You can download. Uh, it has the template in there as well as the script, and it'll hit all those different endpoints that we saw. Um, so once you downloaded it, go to graph.microsoft.com and you can actually see all the different things that you can access through Microsoft Graph. I would encourage you to pick one of those that isn't already in the sample and try connecting to it um, and then sending that information out into an automated email. That way you get a chance to see how intuitive and easy it is to use Microsoft Graph. Thank you and enjoy the rest of Build.